Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Bread forgives our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven especially those most in need of thy mercy. Our second decade. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most need of thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, O most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray, O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life. Grant, we beseech thee, that meditating on these mysteries of the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, may we imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through the same Christ our Lord. The Litany of St. Joseph. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, hear us. Christ graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Noble offspring of David, light of patriarchs, Spouse of the Mother of God, Chase Guardian of the Virgin, Foster Father of the Son of God, Zealous Defender of Christ, Head of the Holy Family, Joseph Most Just, pray for us, Joseph Most Chaste, Joseph Most Prudent, Joseph Most Courageous, Joseph most obedient, Joseph most faithful, mirror of patience, pray for us, lover of poverty, pray for us, model of workmen, glory of domestic life, guardian of virgins, pillar of families, comfort of the afflicted, hope of the sick, Patron of the dying, terror of demons, protector of the Holy Church, Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. He has made him Lord of his household and prince over all his possessions. Let us pray. O God, who in your loving providence chose blessed Joseph 
to be the spouse of your most holy mother, grant us the favor of having him for our intercessor in heaven, whom we on earth venerate as our protector, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. morning. Welcome to everyone. Today we're celebrating the fifth Sunday of Lent and we'll have a special blessing of St. Joseph during this liturgy. As we begin, I invite everyone to stand. Thank you. 
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We continue to celebrate the season of Lent, a time of renewal, to do some penance out of our love for Jesus, that we might share in his cross and resurrection. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in, all, in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son had in himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from the least to the greatest shall know me, says the Lord. For I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had came to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethesda in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will be my servant. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice from heaven came and said, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. But others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. So a couple of uh, recommendations for our younger people when you're asking mom and dad. You want to ask them for a particular gift or some money or something you want to purchase. These are some things that I did uh, when I was a kid. First thing, sometimes I go to my mom or my dad and I would uh, butter them up 
a little bit, uh, remind my mom or my dad what wonderful parents they were and their generosity and to say, long, Ma, you have a long history of being generous and I know you will come through for this moment of what I'm about to ask you. I mean, how could a parent resist such uh, warmth from a son? The other time the tactic I had was I would uh, get my little brother Nick. My brother Nick is a year and a half younger than me, smarter than I am. He had bright red hair. He used to actually walk around with a little carrot, a stuffed carrot, and it would match his hairs. He was just this cutest kid you could ever imagine with this fiery red hair. And I knew in some sense that my mom could not resist my brother's charm. And so I would ask my brother Nick, okay, Nick, this is what you're going to do. You're going to go do this, put on the sweet face, bring your little carrot with you. You know, do what you need to do and ask mom for this. So he served as kind of a middleman for me, and I would use my brother in some sense as a pawn to get the thing that I needed. Did you notice in the gospel this morning that the Greeks, they do not go directly to Jesus, but rather they approach his friends first? And they approach uh, Philip first, and they say, Philip, essentially, we know you know Jesus well, and you love him well, and you catch his ear in some sense. We want to see Jesus. Will you put in a good word for us? And Philip goes and sees Andrew, and then Philip and Andrew go together to talk to Jesus, to put in a good word for the Greeks. This is one of the foundations of our belief in the communion of saints. In heaven, Jesus has many, many, many friends who see him and who love him and who love to bring our love and our prayers and our requests to Jesus for us. And what the saints do is they take our love and our prayers and they purify them, they strengthen them, and they make them beautiful for Jesus and present our prayers. The Blessed Mother is the par excellence one who does this, and St. Joseph does as well. To give you an analogy here for the communion of saints, I remember about 20 years ago, the old famous McDonald's had the uh, idea that you could order something and then they'd ask you that question. Would you like to supersize that? Would you like to add more grease onto the grease that you're already going to be consuming with the french fries and the hamburger and a bigger Coke? And you said yes or no. Essentially, what the saints do is they supersize your prayers and they bring them to Jesus and they make them so much better for you and for me. Another example is, uh, anybody who knows me, uh, one of the gifts that I do not have, and I'm absolutely terrible at it, the Lord was delving out gifts to various people when he created them, and I got passed over when he was handing out this particular gift. I cannot wrap presents for the life of me. <laughs> if you get a present from me, it's going to have duct tape on the side, it's going to be crinkled, it's going to look awful, and you're going to say, I really hope the present is better than the wrapping here, Father. So what I do is I ask parishioners, would you be willing to wrap this for me, or my mother, and I ask them to wrap the gift for me so that it is commensurate or reflects the beauty of the gift on the inside. Again, the saints, they wrap our prayers in flowers, in love, in their grace, and all the merits that they have gained in their life. And they bring them to Jesus with this wrapping on them. And it adds weight to your particular prayer. Certainly you can go directly to Jesus, of course. But you can also invoke his friends, the saints, and ask them to supersize and to wrap your prayer and to make it all that much more effective and beautiful for Christ. This Lent, we've been focusing here at St. Uh, Therese on St. Joseph, who, aside from Mary, is the great superstar of our tradition. And like Philip and Andrew in today's Gospel, beautiful St. Joseph is so very approachable. He is a man of tremendous humility. 
Think about this, for 2,000 years, St. Joseph has been perfectly comfortable remaining in the background, quietly praying and enjoying Jesus in heaven. Even in sacred scripture, he's so very quiet. We don't have one recorded word from him in sacred scripture. And yet we love him because his actions and his love are far more than we could ever imagine and so very beautiful for our Lord. These past couple of years, the Holy Spirit has been moving the church to come to acknowledge and recognize and delve deeper into the beauty of this man, this husband and foster father of Jesus, and as a role model, especially for dads in family life. I have to admit that uh, the Consecration to St. Joseph book that's become extremely popular throughout the world and especially the United States by Father Calloway. These last 33 days or this last month, I've learned more about St. Joseph than I have in my entire life. And that includes my five years of seminary as well. I have come to love this particular man, his humility, his generosity, and all of his virtues. Just a little bit ago, in the Litany of St. Joseph, we highlighted that St. Joseph is most just. He acts uprightly towards God, his family, and all those around him. You can count on St. Joseph, because he will always come through for you. He is most chaste. Mary can entrust her heart to Joseph, her husband, because he will always love her with a pure love with a chaste love. And when you have a wife and she perceives her husband is a chaste man, she knows that she can entrust her whole heart to him and her whole being to him because it's safe to do so. And so Mary can do this with St. Joseph, her husband. St. Joseph can help many men and even women to grow in chastity, that sexual integrity, to make a gift of themselves first to their families and then those around them. Joseph is most prudent. He too was in a pickle at one time in his life when Mary was pregnant. And yet, because he's rooted in prayer and God's word, he hangs in there. He persists and protects Mary when she and Jesus needed him the most. You and I often get into pickles. Sometimes it's because of our fault. But sometimes it's not because of our fault. And we're like, how did I get into this? How do I get out of this? How do I work through this? How do I make a decision that's in accord with God's will? What is God's will in this particular situation? St. Joseph can intercede and pray for you to make the right decision. Joseph is most courageous. Remember, this man had to take his wife to Bethlehem with very little money and to be there. And then when Jesus' life was in danger to take them to Egypt, a place very unfamiliar to both Mary and himself. And yet he goes and he provides for his family in Egypt. And the tradition has that it's seven years he's there in Egypt. This is a beautiful man who is obedient and faithful. Whenever God says, go, Joseph, get moving, he moves without complaint and with no hesitation. Today, I hear oftentimes, Father, with all the stuff going on, I've got to tell you, I'm getting pretty impatient here, especially with the people that I love. I'm getting impatient with my children, or with my husband, or my wife, or my spouse. I'm getting impatient with parishioners. I'm getting impatient with the priest at times too, right, or something. You can look to St. Joseph as the mirror of patience and say, St. Joseph, you are so patient. Pray for me that I will be a patient man or woman and to be stable and calm in the midst of everything. Joseph is the model of workmen as well. I don't know about you, but after a long week of work, you get kind of tired when you get home and you just want to veg out sometimes and eat a bucket of ice cream or cookies or something like that. Joseph can pray for you when you're tired. He knows what it's like to work hard. And he can ask for strength for you and renewal 
to be present to those you love, even when you're tired. He is the glory of domestic life and the pillar of families. Joseph loves families. He loves all families, especially strained families and broken families and families that are trying to make their way. He prays for them. He's the best dad and father of all and a true model of what it means to be a dad and a father and a husband uh, to Mary and a uh, father to Jesus. He protects, he provides, he's strong, yet affectionate and tender to those around him. And this year we know with the sickness and the pandemic and so many sick and afraid, he is a comfort for the afflicted and the anxious. He's hope for the sick. They can turn to him and pray for healing. And he's the patron of the dying. The tradition is that St. Joseph died in the arms of Jesus and Mary before his passion. He is the patron of a happy death. You can ask St. Joseph to pray for you and your family that you will always be prepared for a good holy death, to die in a state of grace, in the friendship of Jesus, the Blessed Mother, and the saints. Joseph will be there at your bedside when you're passing from this life to the next, praying for you, winning for you graces, that you remain strong when you're taking your last, last few breaths. Pray to Joseph that you will have a good holy death and pass into the arms of Jesus and Mary. Joseph is the terror of demons. I have to admit, I've never heard this title before reading this book, and it caught my attention, and I thought, whoa, what a title. The man slays dragons. This is a manly man who is not afraid to stand up for what's good, true, and just. He's obedient and quiet and faithful, this directly contradicts the nature of the evil one and his demons, who are disobedient and unfaithful and loud as well. Joseph is a man who, can, who is the terror of demons. The demons do not like Joseph, his voice or his steps or his heart or his prayers. They cannot stand Joseph because he's a man of God. And that's why we stay close to our beloved Saint Joseph. And finally, St. Joseph is the patron of the Holy Church, the Universal Church. The Church needs St. Joseph's protection now more than ever. The Church is the little boat of Jesus in Mark chapter 4. And sometimes it looks like Jesus is sleeping as the waves beat against the boat and we are full of anxiety and saying, Jesus, wake up, don't you care about us? And St. Joseph will pray for us and pray for the church. He's the father of the church. And the waves will keep beating against the church in the future, and frankly, it will likely get worse. We need St. Joseph's fatherly protection for the church now more than ever. In every age, the Holy Spirit gives the church the graces that she needs to bring Jesus to others. And in every age, the Holy Spirit gives the church the saints that she needs for its time and its struggles. These past few years, the Holy Spirit has been moving the church to look more deeply at St. Joseph as a husband, as a father, a man of courage, a man of chastity, a man of generosity, and a profound love. He is a great role model for parents, especially for dads, for bishops, for priests, and for any person open to the truth and to authentic love. The old saying is true today as is ever. The Latin saying, Ite ad Joseph. Go to Joseph. Joseph will provide for you. He'll show you Jesus. Today we consecrate our hearts, our families, and our parish to this beautiful saint. St. Joseph, we want to see Jesus like the Greeks did. We trust that you will help us to see him, to love him, and to serve him as you did so well on earth. And God willing with you, we will do for all eternity in heaven as well. With the whole church then we pray. St. Joseph, pray for us.
brothers and sisters, now we stand together in confidence and profess our common faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As the solemnity of Easter approaches, dear friends, let our prayer to the Lord be all the more insistent that all of us and the whole multitude of the baptized, together with the entire world, may come to share more abundantly in this sacred mystery. For the Universal Church, placed under the patronage of St. Joseph, that he will be to her a faithful provider and protector, a giver of strength and direction, we pray to the Lord. That through the intercession of St. Joseph, every house and kingdom and nation may stand firm before the Lord in righteousness of heart, we pray to the Lord. For the prayers in our prayer basket and those in our hearts, We pray to the Lord. For catechumens preparing for baptism and our candidates who are preparing for confirmation at the Easter Vigil, may they be filled with the light during this time of study, reflection, and prayer. We pray to the Lord. For the protection of our soldiers who are in harm's way and their families at home, that through Christ's suffering, they may be protected and preserved with trust and hope. We pray to the Lord. That we may all be granted a happy death through the intercession of St. Joseph, that we may be taken into the abundant life of heaven in his blessed company. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died and for all who mourn them, especially Kathleen, Mary Dunbar's and the Atlanta shooting victims. May the angels lead them into paradise where they may taste the fullness of God's love in the kingdom. We pray to the Lord. For Erwin Eisenbacher, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This time we'll do our act of consecration for our parish to St. Joseph. to bow down for the blessing. O glorious patriarch and patron of the church, O virgin spouse of the virgin mother of God, O guardian and virginal father of the word incarnate, in the presence of Jesus and Mary, we choose you this day to be our father, our guardian, and our protector. O great Saint Joseph, whom God has made the head of the family, accept us, we beseech you, though utterly unworthy, to be a member of your holy house. Present us to your immaculate spouse. Ask her also to adopt us as her children. With her, pray that we may constantly think of Jesus and serve him faithfully to the end of our life. 
O terror of demons, increase in us virtue, protect us from the evil one, and help us not to offend God in any way. O our spiritual Father, we hereby consecrate ourselves to you. In faithful imitation of Jesus and Mary, we place ourselves and all our concerns under your care and protection. To you, after Jesus and Mary, we consecrate our body and soul with all their faculties, our spiritual growth, our home, and all our affairs and undertakings. Forsake us not, but adopt us as a servant and children of the Holy Family. Watch over us at all times, but especially at the hour of our death. Console and strengthen us with the presence of Jesus and Mary, so that with you we may praise and adore the Most Holy Trinity for all eternity. We ask this in great confidence through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now bless you with holy water.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Lord, come to our annunciamus Domine. And to our resurrectionem confitemus. Donec Belial. 
Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Therese and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, his assistant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We pray, almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A few announcements for you. The parish youth choir has been practicing via Zoom for the past few weeks. Uh, they're not able to sing together in person at Mass this year. Norma Jean McCosco, who is, their, who is their director, put together a recording of them. You may listen to our youth choir on the homepage of our parish website, and Norma Jean does a lot of great work with our youth and is a wonderful cantor herself. So please visit our website to listen to our youth choir. Script gift cards are on sale uh, today after Mass. Uh, you have Cub Foods, Chipotle, Dairy Queen, all kinds of various options that are there for you. Uh, somebody back there in the gathering space, I think I see Terry back there, if you'd like to get a gift card. Uh, our parish meal pack, Feed My Starving Children fundraiser, has done very well. I'm thankful for your generosity. Our goal was $26,000 for 108000 uh, meals, and this week we met that goal. So we've now met our goal of $26,000. So I want to say thank you for that. Very, very grateful to Liz Lammers and all the work and her entire team puts into that beautiful service project. Uh, the money that comes above now, that $26,000, we will put that uh, towards next year's in-person Feed My Starving Children meal pack so that we can pack many meals next year in the gym over in the school. If you'd like to make a donation still uh, cash, you can do so after the Mass, or checks can be mailed out, uh, mailed or dropped off in the parish or in the collection basket uh, at any Mass. Uh, this is the last weekend that donations will be taken at the kiosk for flowers as a memorial for a loved one for our Easter season. Uh, this helps to decorate all of the, the church with the plants and flowers, so if you'd like to make a little donation, that'd be wonderful. Uh, that's, uh, I think, Pat's back there to receive those donations for flowers for Easter season. Uh, in terms of signing up for Masses, we are very blessed to not have to do that. But for Easter liturgies, just because there's so many people, uh, we, do, we are asking you to uh, sign up so that we can make sure we know how many numbers we have. Uh, there's no uh, numbers uh, regulation. However, every parish does have to keep six feet apart with the masks. Uh, so that, for us, means 400 people, about as much as we can get in here safely in the sanctuary, gathering space, and community room. We ask that you would sign up if you plan to come in person for one of the three Easter Masses, and they are as follows. We have the 8 p.m. Vigil Mass on Saturday. Uh, then we have the Sunday Masses Easter morning at 8 o'clock a.m. and 10 o'clock a.m. Again, if you've never tried the Vigil Mass, you might want to try that one this year because it really is a very beautiful liturgy. The Sign Up Genius link is available on our parish website. Uh, and unlike Christmas, we will not be doing any physical sign-ups. Uh, so if you are a person who likes to physically write your name in, uh, see the kiosk after Mass and somebody help you to get your name in electronically because everything's electronic for the Easter uh, sign-ups for Masses. Uh, the chapel is nearly complete. We're very close. The new carpet's there, and the chairs are in, and the lighting's almost done. So if you want to take a look at the uh, chapel and how it turned out, you're certainly welcome to do that. Uh, there's a St. Joseph uh, daily consecration prayer card available at both entrances of the Masses. You feel free to take one or two. And then there's a sleeping St. Joseph. Uh, it's kind of a new tradition uh, that's right in front of our baptismal fund. You can write a little prayer out and put it in the little box there, and St. Joseph will answer or offer your prayers to Jesus, and he will answer them according to his will. So that's right by the baptismal font for the sleeping St. Joseph. And then finally, Archbishop Hebda, whom we love very much, is coming here on Friday, this Friday, March 26th, to lead us in the Stations of the Cross. He tends to sing them, which he has a great voice for singing, which is really quite nice. Uh, you do not have to sign up for that. Uh, we will have a Lenten soup supper and a small sandwich afterward if you want to eat in the community room afterward, we do ask that you would sign up for that because of limited numbers. And the Archbishop will join us uh, after uh, the Stations of the Cross and bless the stations that are here uh, at 5.30 on Friday. Uh, Catherine has a note here that we do encourage you to reserve up to six slots with family and friends, and that way you can stay in your own sort of little bubble there at your table. If you sign up as a party of less than six, 
just to be aware that you'll be combined with other parishioners as well for that soup supper. See the events section on the website to sign up uh, for the um, meal portion, but you do not have to sign up for the Station of the Cross when the Archbishop is here with us. Uh, tremendously grateful, as always, for the beautiful musicians in adding your voices to our liturgy and to our new readers. They did a phenomenal job. Their first time reading for us. Uh, great job. Thank you for your presence in Mass, uh, whether you're in person or online. The Lord be with you. I invite you to bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Yeah, and just a few that I'm not quite getting.